Hey everyone, Larry Chen here. We are at Willow Springs and for National Camera Day, my friends at Canon figured it'd be kind of cool to use these cameras and really kind of push them to the limit. I guess essentially today we're doing like a live Hoonigan autofocus, right? So we have Justin Pollock's 1000 horsepower 2020 Formula Drift car. And then we have Odi Bakchus, his uh, S13 Falcon tire demo car. And we're gonna do something really special today. I'm really excited about it. We have my 2020 A90 Toyota Supra rigged up, and we're actually gonna live stream from the nose of that car, as well as uh, from inside. So you can actually see me chase these guys. So part of the reason why we're doing this is because we actually wanna really show, uh, I guess the speed, we really wanna convey the speed that these drift cars actually achieve when they're going full out. But one of the things I always get uh, people asking me about is kind of what, what do I see when it comes to car photography? What do I actually see when I see a car parked there? Well, what I'll do is I'll do a kind of a quick walk around with you. But first, I want to show you the Supra real quick, and I want to show you the camera car setup that we have going on. So it just got wrapped and we just mounted all the cameras, everything rigged up, it's ready to go. So if you guys tune in, if you guys uh, watch the whole stream, at the end, I'll actually be chasing the guys, uh, I'll be chasing Justin and Odie with it. So you can see just a normal, <laughs> normal Toyota Supra, but uh, it just happens to have uh, two 1DX Mark III cameras, both with uh, 17, to 40 f4 millimeter lenses we're actually going to be shooting video out of this one and we're going to be shooting stills and uh, my buddy mason is actually going to help me trigger while i actually drive this but uh, let's get back to the drift cars we'll do a quick walk around and then what we'll, what i'll do is we'll actually get justin and odie to drive around horse thief mile or drift while I shoot from the outside and I'll bring you guys along for that. So let's check out the drift cars real quick. Here now, you got any questions for me yet? Any questions? Camera, camera. <laughs> Odie's asking me what I'm wearing. Well, this is my normal garb, right? <laughs> Just a floppy dad hat. All right, so we got the right, two so pro drift cars. I also want to keep this in mind here. The fact that uh, shooting cars, you know, it's just so much for me about placement, about breaking it up into pieces, um, and really kind of showing its strengths aesthetically, right? So here we're at the top of Horse Thief Mile. Um, you can see the clouds are coming in. You got some hills in the back. I am so for getting the car to the cool location and just getting that good access. Uh, so much of what we do is we really push to have the, we, we actually try to get the cars to the, the actual locations. You know, I, while it's awesome to replace backgrounds and put in skies and clouds and all that stuff, for me, it's so much more satisfying, I guess, to get it out of camera, right? So we got these two cars parked here uh, and, and then Another thing that I really like to promote all the time is actually getting the cars, right? So lucky for us, I'm friends with Justin and Odie and I'm able to request these cars uh, to photograph. But like, let's say if you want to photograph cars of, I wouldn't say this caliber, but something interesting, you know, you can go to your local Cars and Coffee, you can go to um, any local meet or you can go to any car show event or whatever and you can kind of build rapport with the owner to be able to photograph these things. So let's see, okay, so I'm looking at this thing in terms of things that I wanna to try to get when I'm photographing a car. You know, you, you wanna to try to show off, especially for example, this Mustang, you wanna show off a lot of the details. You know, you got the over fenders, you got the nice wheels here, the raised wheels. Um, there's a lot of interesting things to photograph on the inside here in terms of the dash, steering wheel, um, engine bay, of course, that's a big thing. Can we take a look at your engine bay, Justin? Go. 
Just pull, just pull on. Watch it break his car. All right. Engine bay, a lot of awesome details here. Um, you know, for me, I would probably just do like an overall. You know, you get some details of the, the supercharger, the air filter. You can see all of his suspension here, all this fuel suspension. You can actually see it all exposed. That's one picture. You know, I, I just kind of do something. I, I call it my walk. You know, I, I just spend my time. I don't even take the pictures. I just spend my time at different eye levels, right? So I'll get close, I'll get low, I'll, I'll do a 360 walk around it and just that way I can kind of pick out all the things that stand out to me. You know, so with this Mustang, you got the nice carbon fiber hood, you got the nice wheels, you go to the back, let's see, these huge over fenders, right? Um, this tail light detail area is super nice right here. If you look at that from here, especially if you get low, like look, so Justin has the wheel turned to the left. So you can actually see the face of the, the wheel. There's just so many little details and so many little nuances with drift cars that I really like to show off. Um, but I think the best thing about drift cars is actually photographing them from the outside when they're actually rolling. So I think we should get the drivers in the cars. And while we're doing that, we can take some of your questions. What say you guys? Yeah? We have a question. Yeah. So. All right, so we're looking at the feed here, you guys, and looking at your questions. We already got the first one in. Uh, Larry, they want to know is how can you get the full car in focus, basically in sharpness when you're doing a panning shot? Usually they're running into an issue where they only get the hood of the car or just a driver. How can you get the full car nice and sharp? Uh, that's a really good question. And uh, especially when you're shooting drifting, it's uh, an interesting challenge, right? So part of it is because these cars, depending on the corner they're in, they're pivoting, you know, uh, on an axis, right? So if you just make these micro adjustments as you're panning to make sure at least the nose of the car is where your focus point is, then you definitely have a more of a chance of at least getting the nose of the car in focus. But I think the best way to get the front and rear of the car in focus when you're shooting drifting is shooting a little longer lens and also shooting a, basically a part of a track where they're not rotating, right? So if they're rotating at speed and you're shooting a slower shutter speed like 30th to 50th of a second, then you'll definitely see a lot more blur front to rear. With that said, that's kind of why I do the whole machine gunning, right? I'm shooting as much as I can because as much as I shoot, it's really hard to just get something tack sharp right off the bat. You know, when I see the cars coming by, I can't just shoot one or two shots. I have to get as many attempts as possible because of the fact that I'm shooting risky. But um, so many things with panning, you know, there's the target acquisition uh, problem that a lot of people have. I always say, hey, just leave your other eye open then that way you can essentially track the cars as they're coming in. And then I would also say one tip is to hold your breath because as when you're breathing, you know, your whole body is moving. You don't just, you just don't notice these things, you know? So normally I hold my breath, keep my other eye open, and then I just practice my swing. Even before the car comes, even before the car is anywhere near where your frame is, I would practice the swing over and over and over. And then once you feel like you have it down, then once the car comes, you know, you just, it's, it's should be second nature. So let's have these guys get in their cars and then we'll get some shots of them coming around us. Ready? Justin's ready. Go. Yeah. So while they're getting ready, I can take another question. All right, you guys, we got another one from the chat. Uh, next question was, what is your go-to lens for drift photography? That's a good question. My go-to lens for drift photography 
is this lens. It's the 7200. 70 I think this is probably the best overall all around lens where it gives you enough range, right? So we're at Willow Springs Horse Thief, Horse Thief Mile. And while it's nice to be able to shoot with something long like a 400, 300, 500 millimeter, it's actually a lot more versatile to shoot with a 7200. You can actually get pretty close to the cars while they're going at speed. And you know, you can pan all the way, you know, at 200. And if you shoot at 28 with a lower ISO, uh, when the light is a little lower, it's nice. You can actually get that natural separation. And then of course, if they have, uh, we have two cars running at the same time, like with Justin and Odie right here, if we want to get a tandem shot, you know, we can zoom out a little bit to 70. No, a lot of times when I am shooting drifting, I'm shooting prime lenses, but in terms of like, I wouldn't say entry level, but prosumer level, if you really want to get into the hobby, definitely the 7200 is the way to go. You guys want to start up? All right, so they're going to start up. They're going to warm up their cars and then we'll do a couple corners and I'll just kind of give you guys some pointers as they're going by. All right, next question. Uh, this is a good one also. If you can only have one camera body, what would it be? That's a good question. Uh, I, I, I mean, as of right now, I think it would definitely have to be the 1DX Mark III. We actually helped Canon launch this camera and th this camera really has a special place in my heart. It's, uh, it's so, it's bulletproof. I mean, I drop it all the time. You could see my cameras are just destroyed. They're dinged up. Uh, you can actually see the wear marks from my fingers just kind of going over the buttons. Uh, it's, it's the workhorse camera, you know? It's really heavy and it's reliable, it's durable and it's really fast. Like this is the machine gun camera. You know, when I'm able to shoot 16 frames per second, uh, with, with the action just happening so fast, you just don't really have a second chance at capturing this kind of stuff, you know? So part, part of it is not uh, having the, the it's, it's not about having like crazy megapixels like using an R5 or a 5DSR, right? It's more to me about getting the image at all. You know, do you want the image or, or the moment to pass by? Or do you want to at least have an attempt to grab that crazy image that is happening in front of you? That's why I love this camera. Ready? Let's do it. Okay, so they're gonna warm up. We're gonna do a couple solo laps. We're gonna do a couple tandem laps. And then uh, I'll just kind of bring you guys along. But of course, the main feature, if you guys just tuned in, is uh, the fact that we're actually gonna live stream from the nose of my Toyota Supra. And I always say that, I always say I think it's honestly the best view of drifting, because it's one thing to stand on, on the side of the track. It's another thing to actually ride in the cars. But, but I guess the third thing is like that third person perspective you can actually see all the little nuances. You can see them doing their transitions. I can actually see them in the car, you know, just fighting that wheel and using the e-brake, all of that. It's uh, something else. So they're gonna warm up. This track means so much to me. I've shot here so many times. I've shot a lot of Just Drift events. I've shot um, a lot of competitions. I've driven pretty much every one of these tracks here. But uh, Justin and I actually, we actually met here probably about 15 years ago when he first started drifting. All right, I think they're probably warmed up. So we're gonna have them come around here. Um, let's see. Hey, Justin, are you guys on radio? Yeah, we're uh, in position. Let us know when you're ready. I think we should probably just start with uh, a tandem run. All right, let's do it. Tandem? Yeah, tandem and then go all the way around me. So I am ready for you when you are. Um, top and then finish through right where you're at? Yeah, uh, go all the way around us so we can get some nice shots of you coming around us. Okay, 
basically finish at the water tower. Yeah, that's fine. That. All right, so for this first one, uh, a lot of times these drift cars, you just never know. A, they run out of tires pretty quick. B, who knows, mechanical issues, whatever. So to start off the day, a lot of times when I'm shooting these cars, I'll try to freeze the action. So they're gonna go tandem right now, and I'm gonna put it in AV, uh, ISO 50. So it's giving me about maybe 125th, 160th of a second at F28. It's safe enough, I think, to get at least one sharp shot. So we'll have them come by and then we'll get So one issue that we run into a lot of times when shooting drifting is the smoke getting in the way of your actual shot. So what happened now was they actually came down this corner, they produced a lot of tire smoke, and then essentially what it did was it blocked my shot here. But luckily the wind is blowing fast enough where, as my buddy Jared Deanda uh, would say, it's like nature's Zamboni. It's like clearing the smoke, you know, so you get a clear shot the next time. So that one, I shot AV, ISO 50, wide open, 2.8, right? At 200 millimeter to get a stack shot of both of them together. Um, it's more of just like a... It's more of like a storytelling shot. Yeah, well, uh, we're ready. Just count to five and then go. Right, so then, I don't know if you could see, but it's basically both of them stacked together, right? And then... Now, what I'm gonna attempt is I'm gonna attempt uh, a panning shot and I'll show you guys how I do it on the Wendy X Mark III, but I'm gonna shoot TV, 30th of a second, ISO 50, and then whatever uh, the, the aperture lands, it'll land there. All right, I'm ready for you guys. Single or tandem? Let's uh, do two singles back to back. So, um, Justin go and then uh, Odie, just give like a 15 count and then go. Uh, are you changing positions or are you staying in the same position? Um, we'll, we'll change position. We'll change positions real quick. So, right, sorry, we're gonna go over here real quick. Section, or are we just gonna do the top and bottom? Um, I'm just gonna mainly get you on this downhill corner here. So we switch positions. Uh, and then I'll just have you guys you guys could shut down way before the water tower. Copy that. All right. Tony, watch out for snakes. There might be, there might be some rattlers here. Okay. All right, I'm ready for you guys. So this one, my main shot is gonna be around this corner here, around this area. Once they get on power, they're really gonna start making smoke. And that's kind of where, I, when I do my uh, really big blasts. Yeah, that, I guess that would have been the perfect time to say. So anyways, I started blasting. Here comes Odie. Here, just just focus on Odie for this one. That is awesome. Okay, so so that one, I shot TV 30th of a second, and I know what you guys are probably thinking. I run into this question or I run into this, I wouldn't say issue, but it's something that I deal with every time I teach a class. So if you guys don't know, at every single Formula Drift round, I actually teach like a one hour photo class, right? So you can sign up at each round. And one of the things I notice right away 
I would say 90% of the students that come and shoot at my class, I see their camera and they're shooting on manual when they're shooting drifting. That's fine. If, that, if that's what you're comfortable with, then that's fine. But I can guarantee you, you're not gonna be as fast as me shooting a 1DX Mark III because the, there's this awesome feature that a lot of people don't realize with this camera. I can switch between AV and TV. Sorry. I, uh, I can switch between AV and TV with just a quick push of a button within a millisecond. So within just one run of them coming down here through this corner, I can switch between AV and TV five times. And that way I can freeze the action. Let's say they're about to do a dirt drop. They're about to go off. They're about to crash or whatever. I just let go of this and then I'm freezing the action. Or if I'm panning and I want to continue panning, I just hold down this button. And then just depending on what mood I'm in or what the kind of photo I'm trying to get, I can just toggle it on or off. If you are shooting manual, good luck changing the settings that drastically within that short of a time. And on top of that, the, the, especially right now, the clouds are going in and out. Uh, the conditions are changing within you know, minutes. So I really, 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 really try my best to utilize this technology and utilize how smart these things are to kind of obtain the results that I want. So I think these guys are going for a cool down lap. Are the guys going down for a cool down lap or what? Running singles coming by you. Copy that, copy that. So now we're gonna do the same thing. All right, so now that we've done a couple passes, uh, we don't actually have to wait till we get to a computer to choose selects. One of my favorite features about, I think pretty much every Canon DSLR and uh, mirrorless camera has this feature where you're able to go through the photos and then you can actually rate or star your favorite shots. So with drifting, because I'm shooting so risky, like. For example, that run, I was shooting 15th of a second. Yeah, I can hear you. There we go. Okay, hear me, buddy. Actually, that goes into well, one of the questions we I'm just shooting. got from, from the chat yeah, as well. Yeah, I can well. hear you. What's up? Uh, okay. uh, another question that we're looking into is basically, they want to know, after you're you know, machine gunning with the camera, is how do you select the one? Out of those thousands of images, how do you know this is the one I'm going to edit yeah. and print? That's, that's a really good, yeah, that's a really good question. So that's kind of what I'm talking about right now. Within that one run, I, who knows, shot, I, I mean, I look at the camera and since I started recording with you guys, I shot 170 pictures, right? That may sound like a lot of pictures, but legitimately, maybe only five are good, which is fine because the, these are the only ones that you want to show people. These are the only ones that you want to publish, you know? I'm shooting so risky. That last run, I was shooting 15th of a second. Okay, so 15th of a second, you can physically hear the shutter open and close. That's how slow it is, right? So for you to be able to get a tack sharp shot, like all the stars aligned, the, the car is in the right position, I happen to be panning at the right speed, all of that, for it to be that sharp, you know, it, it's, that's why it's a numbers game, you know? That's why I shoot a lot more. For example, I just came from Pikes Peak, right? We spent nine days in Pikes Peak. Myself and the team, we ended up with 75,000 shots. With that said, we're gonna publish maybe 7,000 of those, you know? Uh, they may not all be good. And we save the bad ones because you never know, you might have to go back 
to whatever, get extract extra pictures or whatever. But with that said, um, I think we'll have them run one more time and then we'll actually jump in the Supra and we'll chase them. Okay. You guys want to do another tandem? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, uh, standing by for tandem and then you guys can change tires for us to chase you. I think we're, uh, we're well, we've made that two more laps. Okay, if you guys want to do two back-to-back uh, -back laps, then uh, you guys can change for or tandem. All right, maybe for, for chasing. So yeah, if you guys have any other questions about shooting drifting, about shooting action, uh, just just ask the guys in chat, ask Canaro. He'll ask me and I'll try to answer as many as I can. So we got Justin and Odie, some of the best drivers in the world driving for us today. So I'm really excited about that. This time, show, show how close these guys are. Just focus on them and I'll try to get a shot. If you guys ever have a chance to go to Formula Drift or if you guys ever have a chance to watch any professional drifting, one of the things that is, is so fun for me to look at is just try try your best, use binoculars or if you can get a seat good enough where you could sit close, watch what the guys are doing inside the car. It's absolutely insane how much hand movements, how much their body is moving just to keep this car sliding. It's kind of amazing. Uh, but these guys are almost out of tire. They're gonna do one more lap. And I think I'll probably try to do one more shot. I'll, I'm gonna use my wide. I'm gonna use a 35, 1.4 on the 1DX Mark III. And then I'm gonna do a pretty slow pan. I'm gonna uh, pan at 15th of a second. Change tires. We're gonna get in the Supra, and then we will live stream from there. Uh, Larry, can you hear me as well? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, buddy. So we got some more questions. They're just flying in. So I'm gonna grab the next one for you. Uh, when you're shooting rollers, which is a new term I'm just learning today. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> Would you prefer shooting your videos or stills in? Are you in TV mode or manual? Uh, that's a really good question. My video guy, Tyler Capper, will kill me for answering this question. Um, yeah, if you guys want to do one more, um, or yeah, just do one more and then go change tires. Yeah, so um, it depends, honestly, right? So. If we were in uh, a situation where there's gonna be a lot of light changing, like if you're going in and out of tunnels in the city, if you're going under overpasses and underpasses, and if you're in the canyons going in and out of the light, I would say TV. But if it's a constant shot, I would say manual. But we got some drift cars, so I'm gonna get some pictures. Let's get a shot of it. want to change tires I'm gonna jump in the super I'm gonna chase you guys yeah so just to continue on to that answer 
Um, if there is a, is a situation where the light isn't gonna be changing and you're not gonna be changing too many angles, let's say if you're on the highway and the car that you're doing rollers of is maybe two lanes away, then shoot, then shoot manual, you know, because it's, it's not gonna change on you. If you go into a tunnel, of course, it's gonna be, it's gonna be dark, but that's kind of the point uh, of me saying to shoot in TV. So, okay, we're gonna get in the Supra. I'm gonna drop these cameras, and then I'm gonna shoot with that thing. All right, Larry, still on mic, buddy. <laughs> All right, homie, we got a few more coming in as well as you get ready for the next section. Uh, we got two that maybe you can grab as you're getting into the, into the car. One is, are you using any filters on the lenses? And also, what lenses are you using uh, in the car, on the car, to get the following shots? Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So because these guys are gonna be spitting a lot of rocks, dust, dirt, everything, um, I'm actually running two sets of filters on here. So I'm running, um, I'm running a polarizer, circular polarizer, so I can actually shoot uh, through their back glass, or I can actually um, make that, uh, uh, polarize that. That way it, it's not as many reflections. And then on top of that, I shoot with a, a clear UV filter in front of that because I've actually lost many filters. I haven't lost a lens yet, so knock on wood on that. But um, yeah, so that, that way there's at least two layers, layers of protection. I'm running 17 to 40 F4 uh, lenses on here. So that way it kind of really shows the true speed of how fast we're going. We're, I'm shooting at 17 millimeter for both of them. So I really have to get close when I'm chasing these guys. In fact, I get so close that I have to give them room to transition. When I'm in their door, when I'm on my pocket and they have to transition, I essentially have to pull back, give them enough room, otherwise they'll take off the front of my nose of the Supra, and then I get back into their door. So uh, with these, uh, in terms of camera setup, it's the 1DX Mark III's. This one has in-body stabilization. So that way, like the little imperfections in the road, it actually takes them pretty good and it actually allows us to kind of get a, a pretty clean video feed. So I'm gonna go ahead right now. I'm actually gonna use you, Tony, to set focus point. If you could just stand here, I'm gonna set the focus point. A lot of people ask me, how is it possible that I'm able to focus uh, the cameras when I'm actually chasing? Well, one of the secrets is, of course, because I kind of know the space that I'm working with, right? So I'll set the focus point. Plus on top of that, I'm shooting pretty high off stop. So it allows me to have most things in focus. So I'm gonna set the focus point now. We got Tony's standing there. I'm gonna go ahead, click on him. I'm gonna turn off autofocus. And then now we are set on this camera. So I'm gonna go a little faster shutter speed. Here, and then on this one, same thing. It's this is the still camera, right? So I think I can probably do it through here. Might have to unplug you for a second. Okay. Uh, all right. I see you guys there. So focusing, focused, and I'm gonna be shooting. Believe it or not, I'm gonna be shooting thirtieth of a second on this camera and I've actually gone down even slower to 15th or 10th of a second on on the still cameras so I'm gonna this is hooked up to the pocket wizard uh, Mason's gonna be in there triggering from the passenger seat I have done it solo it's a little scary it's a little hard especially because I'm working that wheel you know trying to keep up and I'm pushing that button at the same time it's a lot to think about it's already something else just to be able to keep up with these guys because as much as people don't think that the how like that this is really fast driving they have so much grip especially justin in his 1000 horsepower formula drift car it's uh pretty insane how much forward grip he actually has even though he's drifting and even though the tires are spinning so this is all set up right 
So Mason will let me know when to roll. I'm going to get in the car and then we can answer some more questions. Hanaro, do you have any more questions for me? Uh, we should in about a minute or two. So you do what you got to do. We'll get back to you, buddy. OK, all right. So right now, I'm just rolling on this camera. Um, one of the things that we actually have to do every single lap is we actually have to get out and clean the rubber and tire bits off of the front of these lenses because they kick up so much. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize, especially with pro drift cars, my buddy Chris Forsberg let me know, every single lap that they actually do, they lose about 20 pounds because they lose all of that rubber from the tires, they lose the fuel that they burn, and on top of that, they lose the nitrous that they burn too. So all of that is just expendable weight. And uh, a lot of that, when I'm chasing, ends up on the front of my Supra and also on these lenses. So I'm gonna get in and then uh, we'll get it warmed up. I actually have to scrub these tires too to get the most traction. So are we, are we on this camera now? All right, so see if you can hear me with your right, awesome so motor there. We're waiting for uh, the This guys. is more of a safety one. Uh, what they want to know is they want to see how close of to the trek have you been able to get without a barrier or a fence? So that's a safety question. And have you shot with a fisheye? Is that something you tend to do a lot or not at all? Yes, that's a great question. Um, safety wise, it depends on the track, right? So. Shooting on the outside of a corner is basically uh, a death wish. It is not safe at all, it, especially, you know, even though I've shot so many drift cars over the years, I've, sh I've had so much experience shooting drift cars. Um, they just, they're unpredictable. You know, you just never know. Uh, uh, some steering arm or something can break and you just don't know. But shooting from the inside, generally speaking, pretty safe. Uh, just because it, it, it would have to, it would be like an act of God for them to essentially like overcome physics to run you over. But I mean, I've, I've seen some crazy things, you know, motors can blow, um, tires can blow. So generally speaking, it's a lot safer to shoot from the inside of a corner unless you have a barrier. Good to so, know. Good to what was that the that. question? Thanks, fish eye? Oh, fish eye is great. So I absolutely good. love fish eye. Yeah, fish eye is um, fish eye is something that I use not too often, but I love using it because uh, it's just something. I don't know. It's just a different look, right? You you could use it to tell a story. What what kind of story you're telling, depending on what you're shooting. A lot of times, I'm using fish eye when I just physically don't have the space, right? So. For example, at Irwindale, it's one of my favorite places to mount remote cameras. And what we do is we mount a fisheye on top of the fence. And because it's not that much of a distance, it's still hey, wide hey, enough you for up? you to be able to put, uh, fit two cars in the frame. He's just putting some fuel in the car and I'm putting my helmet on in just a minute. All right, so. Cool, cool, sounds good, thank you. Uh, Charles, I'm gonna warm up the tires. Um, if you want to see that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Well, that was fun. All right, so my tires are warm. They're early. And uh Already cutting inside. I'm going to get ready to cha chase these guys. I do have to scrub the fronts too. Right now, so yeah. Mason, if you need to throw up, uh, throw up outside of the window. Yeah, I All right, so I am rolling in the front now already. And the cool thing is Mason can actually switch between the two cameras. He can show the video camera, which is a stabilized image, and then he can, 
he can show the still camera and he, you can actually see the still camera clicking away. So, oh, do I have to push info? I think I have to push info, huh? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, we're ready for you. I'm in my car right now. Is it shooting? Oh, yeah, yeah. See? So, for those of you guys watching right now, you can actually see the number counting down. So, for those of you guys who are saying that you're going to take a shot every time I do machine gunning, when you see this, that means I'm machine gunning. <laughs> I am ready to all right, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna scrub my tires right behind him. Okay, and uh, quickly, what lenses are you running on the front? I am running uh, 17 millimeter lenses on the front. Copy that. If you guys wanna ask questions while I'm driving, I'm I'm up for that. It's definitely an extra challenge, but we can do that. I'm on the walking, no driving, no concern. All right, guys, so we got the questions coming in. Uh, Larry's gonna start uh, setting up a rechange right now before he goes for the next one. As you guys have realized probably, is that we're doing all this live, <laughs> right? So we're basically enjoying the beauty of technology to basically pull video signal off of three of our cameras. We got two 1DX Mark III's in the front of the hood. We got beautiful wind right now, making me feel like Michael Jackson a little bit. <laughs> Man, we have the EOS R with the brand new that we just announced, I believe last night, RF 14 and 35 millimeter F4 lens. So the shot that we have from the inside of Larry's car is with our brand new RF wide angle lens. So we do have one question. Uh, once Larry is ready, we're going to give him a quick ask. I might just walk over and ask him myself, actually. Larry, they got one good question. You can hear me from here. <laughs> Do you use your headlights in low light situation when you shoot stills or video? Why is that so? 
difficult sometimes, especially because it, it's usually pretty harsh. But if there's a way where you can modify the light or if there's a way where you could shoot it at a certain angle that makes the car. All right, guys, so we're coming back over to me. <laughs> as you can see, they're getting the packs ready and, and the stream back up for the next run. Uh, so as we're dealing with just a little bit technical difficulties on that system, please keep giving those questions out. We're gonna keep asking Derry as much as we can. And as the other cars get prepped as well. So just give us a couple of more minutes, you guys. any technical questions on our side let's see if somebody can shout me out anything more camera specific as we wait for Larry to get ready back for us again because sadly I can't answer any car related questions wrong person to ask If you can hear me, uh, oh no, we actually have we have a really good one actually early into the show. Uh, one was when you start off your career, what would have been a great advice to hear that would have really helped you or really would have sped up uh, your growth when you just got into the industry? As you guys see, we're doing everything live, so we're working with basically on how we're utilizing uh, wireless video technology going off of three of our cameras, right? So earlier I already talked about how we're using uh, HDMI out off of two 1DX Mark III's on the hood of the car. That's where that's giving you that great point of view from the vehicle. And then also we have an inside camera with the EOS R and our brand new RF 14 millimeter. And then I got Larry coming in right now and answer about? all your what questions. <laughs> What are you doing? All right, did you hear my last one? What, what was your last one? The last one was, when it comes down to advice, when you just start off your career, what would have been a great advice to hear or to receive that would have really helped you speed up your growth? Mm, that's a really good advice. Uh, I think it's just, honestly, the main thing is really just chase the art, chase the pictures, chase the access. And along comes with so many things, friends, um, travel, of just experiences, right? Just everything surrounding the car community. Uh, it, it, it's kind of insane how, I guess, open and how uh, inclusive and yep. how amazing that car community is. Uh, allowing me access to their homes, to their racetracks, their cars, you know, just everything. And just being able to experience this or, being able to use this as a vessel uh, for my photography, it's something else. So, so much of it is just that, you know, chase the art, 
Jeez, well, one, one, one thing that you brought up a few weeks ago, we we're hanging out and we were talking about reminiscing how we started both our careers, right? right. Before, before you were doing your thing, before you even got with Canon and doing my thing, is when one of your trips out to, I believe, Tokyo yeah. and the gear you were using. And I oh, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think oh, that's a great story because really of what, yeah, we started. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, uh, the best camera is the one that you have with you. Exactly. Or the best camera is the one that you can afford. Yeah. And at the time when I started out, the only thing I could afford was the original Canon Rebel. You know, while that it, it, it sounds like a, a dinky camera, I thought it was the best thing ever. I had two of them actually in case one, whatever, if I dropped it or broke it, whatever, you know, I had, had a backup. But it's so much is just about what you can get your hands on. You know, there's just so many good used cameras on the market. I, you know, you can get and that's one thing. A, a Canon. Well, that's the one thing that even I like to stress out with with my workshops as well is the fact that yes, we're we're not using cheap stuff right now, and, and there's a reason for it. With, with the extreme conditions, we're literally being hammered by wind. Earlier today, I kid you not, we had a mini tornado blow through our base camp, <laughs> so that was a nice start halfway to the day. But a one D's for that. A one D's the one you can just beat, and it will work. But a Rebel, you can get an award-winning shot with a Rebel. You can award winning shot with an EOS R at that price. Price is incredible. Well, um, that's a good yeah. question. Or that's a good point. So, a lot of people ask me, "What's my favorite shot ever? Or what's my best yeah. shot?" Right? There's no way to answer that, really. Yeah. I always say something stupid, stupid like, like, "Oh, I haven't taken it yet," or whatever. Right? Well, a lot of photographers take that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, I, honestly, one of my most famous shots was with a Rebel T3i. There you go. You know, yeah. with the, with the T3i, and it was strapped. Granted, it was strapped to the front of a BMW E46, you know, kind of like this. Bit. Yeah, it helps, it helps. <laughs> but like, just hear me out, okay? This is a consumer camera, and the reason why we use it for that kind of duty, for remote camera, kill camera, all of that, we use that because it's lightweight, it's easy to mount, easy to hide, mm -hmm. you can use great lenses with it, you can use EF, EFS lenses, my favorite is the 10 to 22 EFS lens, right? There that we go. use it. We use that for mounting in the weirdest places. You know, right next to jumps, uh, inside of cars, on top of cars, in engine bays, whatever. We'll mount it there because it's small enough and light enough to fit. So it's so much about just utilizing the equipment that you have. It's getting the, the one that you have. You know, they're, they're more affordable now than they were before. And with the recent upgrades that we've done with our, our lineup, now you have full frame being affordable within hand's reach. You know, if you're looking at EOSR before, all we could do was a crop when we were starting off, right? Maybe all we could afford was a crop sensor camera. Now you can get that full frame for that matching of a price nowadays that was a Rebel back in the day. And going back to the 1022, you can also mount that with our adapter on that full frame. It automatically crops in and you can still utilize those lenses. You don't gotta eBay and we'll toss them out. Well, basically now with camera technology, yeah. everybody is cheating. It's, you know, it's, it's, it, it really is <laughs> cheating. Like, the, the, I mean, I started with film, you know, coming right out of high school. Remember those days. Right. But with that said, I still shoot film for fun. Um, but I was kind of, I guess, fortunate to get into my career at the cusp of the, the transition, transition yeah. right? You know, you, you had the original uh, 1D, right? You had the original. 10D around that time, and then the Rebel. And it was all of these new groundbreaking cameras, and I was just so lucky to be able to get in at that time. And then we'll see if we can get some few more questions over here, because uh, I know they're coming in right now. So, so I'll be right back and grab for you. Can we yeah. choose the winner right now of oh, the camera? actually, we do. Yeah. Might as well. We, we, did, did, uh, we randomly already <laughs> choose a winner? You've chosen. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. All right. From your little lottery. Oh, from Ethan Cohen. Say again. Okay. All right, Ethan Cohen. Uh, congratulations! You won my pins. You won a, a M6 Mark II you camera a message right with now a 15. Yeah. On the chat. All right. You better be Say thank right you. Now still. Thanks. Thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for entering. I hope you enjoyed that camera. It's a great camera. We use it for vlogs. We use it for time lapse. We use it for stills and video. Everything 4K. All of the goodness. And of course, my sign pins. Enjoy those. Uh, so let me go grab a few more questions while okay. you're right now. Grab a few more questions. Other than that, what's another thing? Oh, um, Aaron, my buddy Aaron mentioned something that I should mention about car photography. One of the things that I really like to tell, tell people about is, is actually using, utilizing the headlights and taillights 
of a car, even when you're shooting in broad daylight, because it really is the eyes of the car and it really is the face and it really brings it to life, even if it's just a touch of light. So definitely try to shoot with uh, the taillights, headlights on. What's the preferred weather that you, you like, like to shoot Riffwind? Preferred weather is something that I guess, I, I don't know, it's, it's really tough to say, right? Because at Pikes Peak, just a couple days ago, I was literally suffering. I was freezing. Right now, it's really hot. It's 100, 105 degrees at Willow Springs, um, but just three days ago, I was at 13,500 feet, 14,000 feet at Pikes Peak, and it was snowing, it was hailing. I was suffering, and my fingers were so cold, I couldn't turn a circular polarizer. For the, if my life depended on polarizing my picture, I would die because there's just no way I could move my fingers to turn that polarizer. And actually, on that question, how do you control the trigger of the camera while you're driving? How do you do it? All right, so uh, we're using Pocket Wizards. You can use pretty much any remote trigger. There's just so many ways to trigger it. You can actually do it wired also. If you get a, a long enough release cable, then that works. But we like using Pocket Wizards. They have good range and they have really good functionality. Another one. All right. Ready? No. What's the one shot you wish you could you can get that you haven't gotten yet? One shot. I, I you haven't gotten that's yet. That's a really good question. One shot that I haven't gotten that I want to get. Is that what you're saying? So I think um, that that I, I think it's so much has to do with I guess the events that I'm photographing. Like there's just so many more events. I, I've been able to photograph every single 24 hour race, right? So I've been able to shoot Le Mans, uh, Nürburgring, uh, Daytona, Spa, all, you know, all of the 24 hour, uh, you know, even Thunder Hill, all of that. There's just so many other events that I want to photograph that I haven't been able to. I just haven't had the time or the access or the whatever funds. There's just so many things like, for example, one big one is Dakar, right? So. Dakar is such a grand event and it just takes so much time and effort and just everything on the photography side, on the racing team side, on the spectator side, just everything. And, and then now that it's in the Middle East, you know, hopefully maybe I'll have a chance to shoot it, but there's just so many um, aspirational events, I guess, that I would love to eventually shoot one day. Another one just came in is how do you shoot through the smoke? How do I shoot through the smoke? That's a really good question. How do you shoot through the drift smoke? Well, a lot of times you can't. Um, there's a couple of tricks in, in uh, Lightroom or any editing software that you can actually use to cut through the smoke. But generally speaking, it just adds some kind of haze, green or blue haze, or adds some kind of weird color to it. Uh, the dehaze tool in Lightroom is your friend when it comes to shooting through tire smoke. Generally speaking, it's better just to wait for it to clear and get a clear shot. Any other? One lens for the rest of time. That's such a good question. I, I, that, that's impossible, but okay. I have to say, for me, it's the 35 millimeter F1.4 version two. That thing is my favorite lens and it's the lens that I use the most. Oh, the car's good? Ready? Oh, well, uh, a little bit. So, so yeah. we're only going to cut to the other three cars, but we're good for those, all right? Okay. All right. So, 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 it's all, uh, so just do what you got to do, and then when you want to do and answer any questions, we'll come right back here, buddy. Okay. So, all right? so I can chase them. Chase them. Okay. Chase them hard, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now he's walking over back to his car. He's getting ready. Again, probably just full of technical issues we, we have with another streaming kit, uh, but he's gonna get in position and then he's gonna be streaming right over. And again, please keep those questions coming. We're gonna have some real good ones and we love it. Congratulations to, I believe it was Cohen. Ethan right, Cohen, who, uh, who uh, the won the camera. So again, congratulations, buddy. Hopefully you're still on that chat. <laughs> oh, there he goes. You're welcome. Thank you again for joining with us. And now we're jumping over to our next cam and we're ready to go. You good? Yeah. 
Bodie, let me do you for a round and then we'll do tandem afterwards. So now we're gonna do one uh, tandem. So they're actually, it's actually working right now. Hey, Lee. No. Just a heads up, they have video on there now. Video live for you. The video is live, what? You have the video in front of your car. It's live. Oh, it does work. Okay. All right. I'm gonna clean off the rubber. Hey, guys, I have to clean off the rubber. From the from the camera, and then I'll chase you guys for tandem. Sounds good. You want us to tandem on this one? Yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. Do you want the lead, Justin on A? Uh, we can have Justin lead. Okay, let me know when you guys are ready. I'm ready. All right, Larry, see if you can hear me, buddy. All right, Larry, can okay, you hear me, buddy? Okay, here we go. Yeah, I can hear you. So we're gonna tandem now? Yep, I can hear you. So now we're gonna all tandem. All right, all right, let's see if we're you can still hear me with the motors. These guys uh, running door to door. What is the fastest speed you might be going at what, that you're used to driving when you're taking these photos? Uh, I could probably go up to 100. The fastest that I've chased is about over 100 miles an hour, and that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm like top of fourth gear, almost into fifth, and these guys, I mean, it's just so much trust to be able to, to chase these guys um, going that fast. So, Larry, what Larry, do you guys you think? No Should I? If you got me here. Yeah, yeah. Yep, go ahead. When you're using metering mode in AV and TV mode, uh, is there a specific metering mode they're using in the camera? Is it spot, partial, evaluative? Hey, Larry, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, hold on, let me get back to you about that question. I'm a little busy right now. All right, all right, I'll give you a minute. It sounds a bit loud there. <laughs> yeah, these guys are crazy. Yeah, you just give me one minute. Crazy? so much grip. So if, if some of you guys are wondering how I'm able to see through the smoke, I'm not. I'm actually able to see through the smoke, but I trust these guys so much. I trust that they will be on the other side when I actually appear. So. Uh, guys, I need a 
copy that cool down lap so they're gonna go for a cool down lap and then I can actually answer some questions so metering metering mode is that is that the question what metering mode you use so metering mode um, generally All right, speaking, Larry, can, I use, Larry can you hear me buddy uh, evaluative right that's the one with the yeah I can hear you Yeah, no, if, if they're going to do a cool down lap, then uh, by all means, yeah, feel free to come back to where we're at here at the main camp and uh, we can ask any more questions if you want to take a cool down for the, uh, with the drifts. Okay, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll finish off strong. They're going to do a full course drift and I'm going to do my absolute best. So they're going to go change tires and then I can answer some last questions. Questions for me? Uh, we're looking good, buddy. We're looking good over here. I think we're getting close to the end of the show soon, actually. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let me know what you guys want to do. I can answer questions. Um, what do you want me to do? Should I do a little All right, let's see. Let, let, let's wait right there. Let's, let me get you one more question. Larry, do you copy? Yeah, go ahead. Maybe I should answer questions while I'm doing a burnout. Yeah, do you want to get a shot of me doing a burnout? Hey. <laughs> yeah, Odie's well, ready. Almost, buddy. Can you hear me, buddy? Yeah, I can hear you fine. What's up? Larry, you there, buddy? All right, bud. So, uh, one another question. How did you learn yeah, to drive so fast? Did you go to a special track or just found an empty street? Uh, oh, I definitely, definitely did not just do it on the street. Do not. Whatever you do, don't learn on the street. Keep it to the track. There are so many tracks all over, wherever you are, uh, or parking lot events or some sanctioned events. For you to actually learn how to drive uh, I, I would definitely highly advise not to do any street drifting or street racing keep it to the track you know these guys they live at the track that's how they are able to be so good over the years and um, yeah I mean I, I learned driving from autocross I grew up autocrossing during time attack just a little bit of everything you know I, I definitely want to get into drifting more I just wish I had more time and hopefully that's something coming up soon but I think Odie's ready. Uh, maybe I should change, chase him one more time. Should I chase him one more time, Hanara? Okay, yeah, you, you get prepped, buddy. Yep, get yourself prepped. I got one last question here, though. How much time do you spend in post-processing? Uh, that's a great question. So the question is, how, how much time do I spend post-processing? And, you know, it, so much of that comes down to what your goal is, right? So my goal is, as a car photographer, as an automotive photographer, I want to try to show the, the photo, I want to try to show the scene in its truest form. You know, I want to essentially represent what I thought the scene looked like. So I want to try to match the color, I want to try to match the tone, the contrast, all of that, you know? so. so if you watch, if you look at my photos and you look at my edits, they're not off the top, you know? It's not so crazy. There's no like light shooting out of the car or anything like that. It's because a lot of times I'm just capturing it for what it is. Um, let's just do a chase lap with Odie. Odie, are you ready? Do you want me to do a chase lap? Yeah, I'm ready to do a uh, 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 you're ready. I'm ready now. You wanna to switch to the front camera so we can see? So the funny thing about the Supra is collision avoidance. So the collision avoidance keeps coming up because it thinks I'm basically going to run into the back of Odie. Oh, 
Keep up with him. <laughs> He's so crazy. Oh man. Do you feel the rear end coming out every quarter? <laughs> oh man. This guy's insane. <laughs> Where you want to do one more? Uh, sure. Let me know when you're ready. You want to do this downhill too? Yeah, I'm pretty much ready to roll. Okay, I'm ready. Go. guys like that in terms of speed on this track you legitimately can't go any faster because we're drifting the front straight here and I'm in fourth gear trying to keep up with this guy but he is not letting off at all like there is no OD it's 100% or nothing and I'm out of breath trying to keep up with him holy cow oh that was crazy good thing we have AC in here oh Try to do full course. Hey there, everybody, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right, you got a, how many more laps you want to do, buddy? This is going to be the last lap, and we're going to do full course. Copy that. All right, at the end of their lap, buddy, we'll see you right here back at the base camp and uh, we'll do our final outro, homie. Okay, all right. Okay, got it, sounds good. Ready for this, Mason? So he's gonna do full course, which is essentially as much as he can go, as, <laughs> as fast as he can go. This is gonna be insane. All right, so we're live from the here. Let's do this. Oh, 
my god. That was insane. Oh, I honestly can't go any faster than that. Like 10 tenths. That was 10 tenths, guys. Actually, it was 11 tenths because I there was some moments where I was like, there's no way. I'm going to run out of grip. Oh my god. Oh, that was insane. All right, so I think we're going to have to finish this off. Justin, thank you. We're signing off in a couple minutes. Holy crap. All right, Larry, I think uh, I think that was your last lap, buddy, right? How you guys feeling? Got any tires yep, left? Yep, yep, that was our last lap. Thank you so much. I'm going to come in. I'm going to sign off. Uh, what, what a day, oh my god. I can't believe we just did that. As you come in, I do have one other question, though. Uh, what was the most challenging event you ever had to cover? Um, that's, that's, that's a good question. There's, there's just so many. I mean, the, the hits just keep coming, you know? Like, when you're out in the elements and when you're fighting just everything uh, in terms of, um, car failure, weather, uh, health. Just to give you an example, f so we were at Pikes Peak for th nine days, right? The first three days I had food poisoning. And uh, you know, the, you just can't let something like that hinder your performance, you know? Y you have to push hard still. And I just fought through it and it was painful and it was actual suffering, but um, yeah, it, it, it was something else. It was it was worth it. So I think I should sign off, maybe, or I should, let me just do a quick burnout first. Oh, right up, buddy. it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. There you go. <laughs> There's some tire Where smoke for you go? guys. <laughs> right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I have some tire left. All right, so is that it? Should we, should we it, sign Henry. off? That's it. Thank That's you so much. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank and you for the drivers and everyone being yeah. here. The whole yeah. crew, nice hot weather, rain, tornadoes, and thunder. We still make the sucker yeah, happen. Technical <laughs> issues. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. This, this was definitely, um, it was an experience. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of technical challenges, but I think we went through we it. Through. Yeah, it. It was just, have, have we ever, ever has anybody ever done this? You know, live stream from the nose of uh, cables uh, out, everything yeah. else in the remote, remote desert. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. But anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thanks to Canon, of course, for having me. Our absolute pleasure. pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone, for joining us at our Get Up and Go Canon event. I hope everyone enjoyed all the sessions we had earlier. And if you missed everything else we did earlier today, please sign up to our database so you can get informed next time we have these awesome events. Ciao, homies. <laughs>